from police officers in Mufti just accosted us. The next thing was Slaus. What are you doing? They are recording us. So from 8 o'clock to 12, I saw hell. I was beaten. We were beaten. Beaten is an understatement. I read Psalm 91. I lost count. Despite telling them we were journalists, they seized our ID cards, our cameras, and just name it. Till date, many journalists who featured during the NSAS protest prefer to be in the shadow, not for lack of information about the incident, but for fear of the adverse action that might ensue. Currently, Nigeria is ranked 120 on the World Press Freedom Index, a drop of five sports from its ranking in 2020. Reporters Without Borders describes Nigeria as one of West Africa's most dangerous and difficult countries for journalists. Taking a cue from media experiences during the protests, how can the status change? I was walking, I'm a woman and I, and I was white, so they could see us from far and they were shouting like, who are you? They would say like, we are press. And you know, I, I'm not saying it was easy all the time because some of the military were really uh, aggressive and rude and so on, but it's part of the job how to, you know, to deal with that and we've learned that. The media profession, the media community, the civil society community, and in fact, all the general public should actually engage in active advocacy for enthronement and protection of media freedom. You see, because the truth is, until the media is free, we cannot be free. Media outlets in Nigeria were attacked and vandalized during the protest, just as three independent broadcast stations got sanctions by the Nigerian Broadcasting Commission, NBC. Our broadcasters have shown crass lack of professionalism and a disposition to be escalators of conflict. The commission has therefore sanctioned stations who were found culpable and liable for infractions regarding these provisions of the code. With the media being at the receiving end of both actions, what are the lessons and the way forward? There's no way a media organization in the reporting of a crisis will satisfy everybody. It's, it's, not, it's not possible. We need to talk about the, the state of the media itself, the need for the media to be much more you know, resourced, uh, for journalists going to cover conflicts to be provided with uh, uh, the appropriate uh, equipment. We are in the age of technology, and I think technology makes it possible or should make it possible for journalists to cover protests from safe distances, from safe you know, places. You need a vibrant, a free, and uh, a very conflict-sensitive media during crisis situations. Journalists and media workers shine a light on local, national and global challenges and also tell the stories that need to be told. It was high time the laws that protect independent journalism, freedom of expression as well as the rights to information be adopted, implemented and enforced. Me, Omni, New Central.